Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the activity from the Leaving Cert Music Technology option. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at inputting a score in particular. So let's take a look at the curriculum. And you'll see across the levels, the activity is quite similar. So you have to input, save and retrieve a score. You have to perform some edits. And you have to produce a tape or score version of the music. Uh, in more recent notes from the State Exam Commission, they've said you can show how to print or record as opposed to producing a tape. So that's more in line with music software these days. You tend to render to a WAV file. So uh, let's look again. We'll use the um, higher level 50% performing option to input, save and retrieve two three-part scores. We'll use one to keep the video a bit shorter. Um, we'll then save and uh, uh, close and save and show it to render at the end. In a separate video, we'll do the editing again just to keep the video shorter. So let's go to it. I have uh, in front of me one of the standard Leaving Cert workbooks, and we're going to use this for a score. A student would have to bring in their own independent sheet music. Uh, you can't take a photocopy of this, but that's quite easy to arrange. <coughs> and I'm going to take a uh, Adagio in G minor there. So that's what we're going to use. And we're going to use that score to input into the software. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to start off uh, with my first track here. And I'm going to go and choose a violin, looking at my score. And um, so I can go to my instruments on the left and choose a violin. Okay. I'm going to change the tempo of my session, which I could do up here on the left, to 60. I'm going to change my time signature to 3, 4. And I can see there's been a change in my timeline to reflect that. So I'm going to start off by inputting four bars. I'm creating a phrase here. And I can uh, double click it to show my MIDI editor at the bottom. Uh, I've got four bars initially. If I zoom in on the first bar, I can change the resolution to 16th notes. Um, we can see it's shaded to reflect the main beats in the bar. There's three beats. And I can see my 16th notes that I can edit in. I can change that if I want, depending on what I'm inputting. So looking at the score, the first note uh, is D. So I'm going to go up to D. <coughs> And entering my D. Now I can hear these notes as I put them in if I want. I can switch that on and off. So the first note is a crotchet or four sixteenths. So I'm going to stretch that along a bit. Next note is a C. It's a dotted quaver. So I'm going to put it two sixteenths a quaver, three sixteenths a dotted. Uh, then I have a semi quaver, B. But we're in the key of G minor, so that needs to be flattened. Um, and then I have a dotted quaver followed by a G semi-quaver. So A, dotted, and a G. So that's my first bar done. I move along to the next bar. I can see it's a G followed by an F sharp. So it's a G minim followed by an F sharp crotchet. So I've got a G minim, so I'll put it on for 8 sixteenths, and then an F sharp crotchet. Let's listen. Okay, so it's quite a melancholic tune. Uh, students can choose something more contemporary, and we're quite big on that. But uh, I'm just choosing um, something from the standard repertoire here for illustrative purposes. Okay, so I've noticed looking down the stave, there's a similar um, rhythmical pattern. So what I can do is, and I'll switch off the preview there, because that could sound a bit funny when you do a multiple selection. I've duplicated that along. So in the next, in the third bar, I can see it's a similar rhythm, but the notes are starting from E. It's in G minor, so the E is flat. Uh, it moves on to a D. I'm looking at my uh, score on the stave here. It then goes to a C, to a B, a uh, flat, and then an A. Okay, and then the final uh, bar is an A again. And there's a rest for the last crotchet. Okay, so there's my first two bars. So 
So a student will be asked to enter all or part of the 16 bars at the examiner's discretion. So an examiner may have seen enough and ask a student to move on. So we'll leave it at two bars just for the example we're doing here. Uh, and I go on to the second part. So the second part is violin again. And I'm going to enter a four bar phrase to start us off. Uh, I'm going to go into my editor and uh, look at my stave again. So the first note is a B flat. So let's go on up to our B flat. Here it is. I'm going to change the resolution to 16th notes. Uh, and I'm going to zoom in on the first bar. Um, a student can zoom in or out as much as they're comfortable with. You can make the notes look bigger, whatever is easier for them to work with. So the first note is B flat and it is a minimum, so it's 8 sixteenths. The next note is another B flat. So there we go. Oops. For a crotchet. Okay, so moving on to the next bar. Uh, we have C, D, E flat. So we're starting with A, C. And it's a, a dotted uh, quaver. So that's three sixteenths going up to the D. Our E flat again is dotted quaver. And D followed by an E flat. So I need to get my E flats together. Okay, so there's my second two bars. Let's have a listen. <laughs> take the volume down a little bit of the second violin part if I like. Uh, again, similar idea. Once a student has entered the notes, they are welcome to copy and paste them. Uh, so let's look at the second two bars. I know it's a similar rhythmical pattern, which is why I've, I've copied them. And I am going to change it a bit. Okay, so this, the third bar is an F sharp. And it runs on for the length of the bar, it's a dotted minimum. And our fourth bar, similar rhythmical pattern, uh, starting at D, up to D. Now of course, um, we've got a flat in our E's, and uh, this note here, looking at my stave again, is a, an F sharp. My final note is a G. All good, okay, let's listen back. Okay, quickly go on to our last part. So going to my third track here, I'm going to make a four bar phrase and I'm going to go and find a cello. The bass part, uh, let's just take a solo cello. There we go, drag it on. Open up my MIDI editor, it's on 16th notes. Zoom into my first bar. Okay, let's have a look. Now it looks like a pretty similar pattern uh, across, this should be nice and quick for us. Uh, the first bar is G, G and Gs. So let's go, we'll come down an octave for our bass part. So let's go to uh, G2. The notes tend to be crotchets in this, so G up to G. Okay, that seems to be the pattern across all of the parts there. I'll just bring up the velocities a little bit there. Now, uh, let's zoom out and duplicate them across. Okay, so the first bar is G's. In the third note in the first bar, it's a, it's a dotted minimum followed by semi-quaver. Second bar is A crotchets. Third bar is A crotchets with two quavers at the end. So putting the last note to 
two sixteenths each time. And the final bar is B flats. Okay, and our final note is a dotted quaver and a semi quaver. Okay, here we go. That's our three tracks input. Let's have a listen. Thank you. 